It was late October on the island of Sodor. All of the engines were working hard. There was going to be a big Halloween party set up by Sir Topham Hatt. The engines were delivering supplies and workmen to the site of the party. There were plenty of jobs to do and everyone was busy. Jobs are plenty, five to twenty jobs for everyone. Jobs the lower and still there's more the jobs that must be done. Train it, train it, you name it, then we all believe the Halloween party will be ready on a Hallow's Eve. The job for mainline engines and branch lines is too. Jobs for workmen in the grounds and dirty dames to set up and deaths who's trying hardest to do more than the rest. Jobs are plenty, five to twenty jobs for everyone. Jobs galore and still there's more, the jobs that must be done. Train it, train it, you name it, then we all believe. The Halloween party will be ready on a Hallow's Eve. Emily and Jordan, Tate and Workman there. James and Edward pulling sweets while Henry's at the docks. And Toby drop us candy or hit a tease to eat. Jobs are plenty, five, ten, twenty, jump for everyone. Jobs the lower and still there's more, there more jobs that must be done. Train it, train it, you name it, then we all believe. The Halloween party will be ready on a Hallow's Eve. Jobs are plenty, five, ten, twenty, jobs for everyone. Jobs the lower and still there's more, there's jobs that must be done. Train it, train it, you name it, then we all believe The Halloween party will be ready on All Hallows Eve The Halloween party will be ready on All Hallows Eve One late afternoon, Thomas and Percy were pulling a train of supplies for the merry-go-round. This is ridiculous said Wooden Railway Thomas. I don't want to be part of the party. We have jobs to do in our dimension too, you know. Oh, shut up, said Percy. You'll be fine working here. But the stupid children will ruin my paintwork, whined Wooden Railway James. At least you will make them happy, added Thomas. Well, thought Wooden Railway Percy, as long as the children are happy, we are happy. That's the spirit, said Thomas. And together, he and Percy puffed and chuffed to the site of the Halloween party. Soon, the two engines arrived, and the workmen unloaded the wooden I mean, carousel equipment. Thomas left to go to the sheds, while Percy took the trucks to collect some candy for the party. As Thomas puffed on his way home to the sheds, he began to wonder, what should my Halloween costume be? As more days went by, more work was completed. The party grounds were looking better than ever, and everyone was excited. Soon, everything was done, and the engines gathered around Timothy's sheds to hear Edward's scary story. Hello everyone, said Edward. Thank you all for coming. I hope the story will actually be scary, said Thomas. Oh, it will said Edward in his mysterious voice, and so it began. So it is common knowledge that we are just toys, and there are many other play rails and track masters just like us. I thought this was supposed to be a scary story, interrupted Thomas. Shut up, said James. We want to hear the story. Oh, it will be spooky, Thomas, said Edward politely, because this ghost story is about you. Well, not you specifically. It is about another play rail Thomas. There once was a boy who loved his toy Thomas. He did everything with him. He took him to the park, he took him in the car, and he even slept with that little Thomas. They were best friends. Until one day, the boy left. He had grown older and left to go to college. He left that poor little Thomas all alone. 
in the darkness of his closet. One day, little Thomas did see the light again, but he was picked out for a garage sale put on by the boy's mother. Thomas knew that he might never get to play with the once loving boy again. He was worthless. But then something happened. He was hit by the boy's mom and the motor turned on. Thomas fell off the table and he puffed away from his old owner's house. He puffed and he chuffed along the city streets, looking for someone who wanted him. But the more he continued on, he grew more tired and became more dirtier. He just kept going and going and going until his battery died. He could not move. He was stuck in place. And after that event, he was never heard from again. They say he's still out there, under a cloak of white, looking for someone to love and care for him. He won't stop, dead or alive. There was a long silence. That was not scary, said Thomas. I thought it was, Percy said, shivering. Pa, I bet you were the only one who was freaked out. No. Henry Lo stared. Um, are you all right, Henry? asked Gordon. No, said Henry nervously, because I think I've seen that ghost engine. Rubbish, said James. It is not rubbish, Henry said. It was last Halloween when I was pulling the flying creep, er, I mean, flying kipper. Ooh, what was that? Oh no, Henry, it's a ghost. <laughs> you silly little... What was that? Okay, I swear, that was not me. <sighs> ah! And that's what happened. Huh, said Thomas. I was wondering why you looked so spooked. Are you saying that he's real? Maybe, said Henry. I don't know. I just hope it wasn't him. Anyway, guys, said Edward, it is time to go get some sleep. We've got a busy day ahead of us. And that is what they did. It was finally Halloween on the island of Sodor, and it was a busy day indeed. The big engines were pulling loads of passengers, and the little engines were delivering extra candy for the party. But soon, the Halloween party was ready for opening, and the children began to arrive. All the engines were going to intend too. They were getting their Halloween costumes all organized when Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. I am sorry to interrupt your preparations, said Sir Topham Hatt, but there is a load of empty trucks by the party grounds that need to be moved. Thomas, Percy, can you please move them? But what about our costumes? asked Percy. We're not ready yet. Don't worry about him, sir, said Thomas. Percy's just being a scaredy engine. I am not. We'll be happy to take the train, sir. Thank you, said Sir Topham Hatt, and with that, he left. What's wrong, Percy? Asked Tom cheekily. Scared the ghost engine will find you. I am not scared. Now, now, you two, said Edward. The sooner you get to work, the sooner you can come and enjoy the party. All right, said Thomas. Come on, Percy. And the two engines puffed to the party. When Thomas and Percy arrived, the party director was waiting. I need you to take these trucks to Wellsworth, he said, just on the other side of the hill. Yes, sir, said Thomas. Yes, sir, 
whimpered Percy. Hey, Percy, said Thomas, you go in front and I'll push from behind. What? No, you go in front. You're not scared, right? I am not. So I will go in front then. Good, said the director. Now please get a move on. So Percy coupled up in front and Thomas puffed to the back of the train. And with that, they were off. The further the two engines puffed, the darker it seemed to get. Percy was now getting afraid indeed, and to make things worse, Thomas started singing. The two soon arrived at Gorin Sill. They began to huff and chuff over the hill, working very hard, and at last they reached the top. They started to speed down when they saw an interesting sight. That's strange, said Percy. The signal is red. There shouldn't be any other engines on our line, said Tums. The signalman must have fallen asleep. <laughs> Was that? Who's there? <sighs> ah! Reverse! Reverse! No! I got you now. Oh no! No, not my cloak. Uh, power. Thomas and Percy's eyes were wide. In front of them was the ghost Playrail Thomas. The two did not know what to say. They were too shocked. But then, the ghost engine smiled. It wasn't an evil smile but a kind smile. Hello, he said. I'm Thomas. But I'm Thomas, said Thomas. He was very confused. So, said Percy, are you a ghost? The other Thomas laughed. No, he said. I was just under my cloak of evil power. I had just ran out of battery when a white cloth flew right on top of me. Little did I know that that cloak would not just give me the power to keep moving, but it would also turn me evil. So I continued on, looking for someone to love, or maybe someone to kill. 
But then, one day, I stopped in front of the director's house. Who's the director? asked Thomas. He's the guy who plays with us and makes the stories. Oh, said Percy. Anyway, your director found me and decided to use me in one of his stories. In that story, I was allowed to scare the living daylights out of Henry. So that explains what happened last Halloween, said Thomas. I guess, said the other Thomas. Say, thought Thomas, I wonder if you can join us. You mean, join you guys on your crazy adventures? Sure, why not? But we have a problem, said Percy. We still need to deliver these trucks, and if you do want to join, we can't just call you Other Thomas. Hmm, how about Ronald? That would be a good name if my original owner's name wasn't Ronald. Thomas thought again. I can't think of any other good names. You can think of Ronald, but no other names, said Percy. Hey, thinking of names isn't as easy as it sounds, said Thomas. Suddenly, he had an idea. Why don't we call you Ramus? A combination of the names Thomas and Ronald. I like that idea, said Ramus. Let's use it. Okay, said Percy, but can we please take these trusts to Wellsworth now? Of course, Thomas said. So Ramus buffered up to Percy and the three engines started off. In no time at all, they were at the station. The station master was waiting. Oh my goodness, he cried. Thomas, what happened to you? He's not Thomas, laughed Percy. He's our new friend, Ramus, said Thomas. Oh, there you are, Thomas. Whew, you gave me a scare right there. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I have an idea to spook Sir Topham Hat at the party. Percy, you go first, and then Ramus follows behind them while I... Oh, said Ramus, I see what you're trying to say. We can scare this Sir Topham Hat by making him think I'm you. The three engines asked the station master, and he agreed. I'll call and let them know you are coming. So Percy, Thomas, and Ramos puffed as fast as they could to the party. When the three arrived, Sir Topham Hat was given a speech. Boys and girls, thank you all for coming. It is a shame that Thomas and Percy are not here yet. They will miss the fireworks. Okay, go now, whispered Thomas. Beep, beep. Oh, there's Percy and- Oh my gosh! The children screamed. Beep, beep. Here I am, sir. Oh, uh, thank goodness, sighed Sir Topham Hat. He looked at Ramos. If that's Thomas, then who are you? I'm Ramos, said Ramos, and Thomas and Percy are my friends. Well, I can see that, said Sir Topham Hat. Say, sir, I was wondering. Yes, Ramos? Did I join your railway? I'd like to work with my new friends. Sir Topham Hatt pondered. I do need another engine on Thomas's branch line. I mean, it has been forever since we've had another engine, so... Yes, you can join the railway. Oh, thank you, sir, said the three engines at the same time. All of the children cheered. And with that, said Sir Topham Hatt, let the fireworks begin. Ooh, ah, special. The fireworks were wonderful. Everyone was happy, but none could be more happier than Percy, Thomas, and Ramus. The next day, Ramus was sent to the works to be repainted. A workman walked over to him. I have orders from Sir Topham Hatt to give you the number 12, he said. All right, said Ramus. Would you like to be repainted? Asked the workman. You look very dirty. No, thank you, said Ramus. The dirtiness gives me a defining look. So Ramus was given the number 12 and he headed to Knapford, where he will meet Sir Topham Hatt and Thomas. When he arrived, Thomas had a long train of trucks to take. Sir Topham Hatt said, Ramus, you are to help Thomas pull this train of freight cars. Yes, sir. So Ramus toppled up in front and the two set off. A 
Along the line, they went faster and faster. The trucks rattled and screamed, but the two didn't mind. Thomas and Ramos were happy working together, and soon they reached the station. You're early, said the station master. Well done. Now it is time to finish it. Leave the vans and take the trucks to the quarry. I cannot come, said Thomas. I have another train to take. Can you handle the truss on your own, Ramos? Of course. All right, but be careful. The truss can be very naughty. Thanks, but I think I'll be okay. And Ramos set off with the remaining trucks. I bet thirty dollars that I'll have an accident, said Thomas's driver. You're on. But Ramos didn't have an accident. Ha! said Thomas's fireman. Pay up. Ramos had much experience pulling trucks when his owner used to play with him, so there was no problems whatsoever. When he arrived at the quarry, Toby was there. Ah, so you're the new engine, he said. I must say, you handled the trucks very well for a new guy. Thank you, said Ramos. Do you work at the quarry? No, but my friend Mavis does. Anyway, it's getting late. I'll show you to the sheds. And that he did. When they arrived, Thomas was waiting. Percy is out taking the mail tonight, he said, so you can sleep with us. So when Thomas and Ramos got settled, Toby started talking about how well he handled the trucks. Wow, said Thomas, you really could deal with them on your own. Thanks, said Ramos. I must say, it would be nice to work at the quarry. Thomas was confused. Why would you like a dirty gray area to work? It reminds me of all the times I was out on my own, on the dark gray streets. It gave me this nostalgic feeling when I went out there. It seems a strange reason to work there, but okay. Anyway, said Toby, let's go to sleep. We got a busy day tomorrow. And soon, the three friends went happily to sleep. As fall turned into winter, Ramis became more and more like family to the other engines. He also became really popular among the passengers and visitors. He became about as popular as Thomas and Percy. Ramos loved the praise, since he had never received so much love in years, so he learned to get used to it. However, in spring, Ramos started to lose his popularity, and it all started going back to Thomas. Ramos didn't mind this at first, but he soon started to get jealous. I used to be the big engine back in the winter, he grumbled. What happened? Now I have little to no attention while Thomas is getting the love. He wanted to change this, but he didn't know how. Ramos decided to watch what the other popular engines were doing and learn about what made them popular. He watched Gordon, the fastest engine on Sodor. He was getting all the love because of how fast and strong he was. Ramos watched James, the most splendid engine on Sodor. He was getting all the love because of his shiny red paint. And finally, he watched Percy, the cheekiest engine on Sodor. He was popular because of his charming and cheeky character. Ramos realized if he was going to best out Thomas, the most popular engine on Sodor, he would need to be fast, splendid looking, and cheeky. So the next day, Ramos made his plan. First, he rushed to the washdown to be polished up. When they finished, he looked splendid indeed. So then came the next step. Ramos puffed into Napper Station where he met Thomas. Hey Thomas. Ramos said cheekily. How about we race from here to Wellsworth? Thomas was confused. Right now? he asked. Yes, said Ramos. It is time to see who is the fastest Thomas toy on Sodor. Thomas couldn't resist. You're on, he said. The two lined up and the station master said, Are you ready? Go! Huffing and puffing, the two set off on their race to Wellsworth. Thomas and Ramos are racing, racing to Wellsworth. Everyone likes to be the first, not second, third, or fourth. Pistons pumping wildly, boilers fit to burst. Popularity's the reward for the engine who comes first. Thomas and Ramos are racing, racing to Wellsworth. Everyone likes to be the first, not second, third, or fourth. Pistons pumping wildly, 
Boilers fit to burst. Popularity's the reward for the engine who comes first. Thomas and Ramos are racing, racing to Wellsworth. Everyone likes to be the first, not second, third, or fourth. Pistons pumping wildly, boilers fit to burst. Popularity's the reward for the engine who comes first. Thomas and Ramos are racing, racing to Wellsworth. Everyone likes to be the first, not second, third, or fourth. Pistons pumping wildly, boilers fit to burst. Popularity is the reward for the engine who comes first. Thomas and Ramos came around the bend. An audience was cheering for them at the station. Ramos was in the lead. Victory was in sight. But then Thomas heaved one last huff and he passed Ramos at the last second. Thomas had won the race. The passengers cheered and everyone, especially Thomas, was happy. Everyone, that is. Except for Ramos. Ramos's plan had failed. And since everyone was talking to Thomas, his shiny polish was not even mentioned. Ramos was disappointed and angry. Really angry. That night, Ramos was in the shed alone until Toby puffed alongside. Thomas and Percy are taking the mail train tonight, he said. Thomas told me about the race. He said you put up a fine competition. Oh, good for him, going off and telling everyone about his victory, said Ramos. Don't worry about it, said Toby. Let's just get some sleep. But Ramos didn't go to sleep. He was muttering to himself, Now Thomas is more popular than ever, and I don't know what to do. He makes me so angry. I wish he just never existed. Then he had another idea. I know what to do. I must find my old cloak. So quietly, Ramos puffed out of the sheds and headed to the tracks. Ramos soon found his cloak. I'll take it to the siding and leave it there for tomorrow night. So he found a secluded siding and pushed the cloak into place. Now I must return before anyone spots me. So Ramos chopped as fast as he could back to the branch line shed. The next day, Ramos was pulling a line of trucks. The trucks were being very obnoxious. Ramos is a slow puff, he can't be Thomas. Ramos is a slow puff, he can't be Thomas. Be quiet, said Ramos as they arrived at the station. Thomas was waiting there with his two coaches, Annie and Clarabelle. Hey, Ramos, he called. Do you want to sleep at Tidmouth tonight? Ramos saw his chance. Yes, please, Thomas. Great. You can sleep next to me if you want. See you tonight. And he puffed on to the main line. Perfect, said Ramos. Now I just need to be sure the cloak is in its place. And with that, he started back down the branch line. When he went to check, it was still there. So Ramos left his trucks at the next station and headed to Tidmouth. When Ramos arrived, he saw a spot next to Thomas and immediately took it. He saw Thomas talking to Percy. Enjoy him while he lasts, Percy, Ramos thought, because he's about to disappear. Soon, everyone was asleep, except for Ramos. He silently cobbled up to Thomas, and Ramos puffed away with him. Ramos went down the branch line as silently as possible and soon came to the siding with his cloak. Whoosh! The cloak flew on top of him, and the dark power raged inside Ramos. You took my popularity away, and now it is time to get my revenge. He puffed to the edge of the set, and with his cloak powers, he created a couple of tracks leading off the set. Ra Ramos used his cloak to turn on the motor, and Thomas was off and running off the island of Sodor Layout.
After removing the tract, a gust blew, and his cloak went off flying into the distance. Now it is time to rest, said Ramas, as he tucked silently back to tend the sheds. The next morning, the engines found a terrible surprise. Where's Thomas? asked Percy. Maybe he's late from a night train, said James. No, I don't think he had one, said Emily. Do you know anything, Ramus? asked Gordon. I wish I did, said Ramus. But I don't. Meanwhile, Thomas had just woken up. <sighs> Wait, this is not Tidmouth, he looked around. Oh my gosh, I'm off the set! Thomas whistled for help, but the director was still asleep and did not hear him. Thomas just puffed on and on and on. Back on the set, Sir Topham had arrived and the engines told him what happened. This is a state of emergency, said Sir Topham Hatt. We must find Thomas. So the engines set off around the island of Soto looking for their lost friend. Where, oh, where is Thomas? Where has Thomas gone? Perhaps he's playing hide and seek or something's really wrong. Sir Topham Hatt has spoken. Thomas must be found. So everyone is searching every inch of sonar ground. Engines search the sightings and every length of track. They look for him round Tidmouth sheds, the front, the side, the back. The children get the day off school to hunt for you know who. And even Lady Hat joins in in case she finds a clue. Where, oh, where is Thomas? Where has Thomas gone? Perhaps he's playing hide and seek or something's really long. Sir Topham Hat has spoken. Thomas must be found. So everyone is searching, but look who's off the set. Thomas is having a whale of a time. He's trapped in a teenager's room. He's rocking and rolling around the carpet floor. He just can't say when he's coming back. Just can't say when he's coming back. Meanwhile up above him, Harold flies high. The narrow gauge are looking to across the Sodor Hills. Everyone is searching, Diesel at the docks. Bertie, Trevor, everyone behind each ragged rock. Where, oh, where is Thomas? Where has Thomas gone? Perhaps he's playing hide and seek or something's really wrong. Sir Topham Hat has spoken. Thomas must be found. So everyone is searching every inch of Sodor ground. So everyone is searching every inch of Sodor ground. Thomas was puffing around and around the room. He kept hearing strange sounds, like breathing and cracking. He was becoming very afraid indeed. Back on Sodor, the engines were still searching for him. They were looking in the mines, they were looking at the docks, and they even looked for him in the storage bin. But no matter what they did, the engines could not find their friend. At the end of the day, Sir Topham had gathered the engines at Napford Station. I am sorry to inform that Thomas is nowhere to be found. This is causing some serious problems. We are in an engine down and I need someone to run his old branch line. Ramos spoke up. Sir, c can I run his branch line? Of course, but only for the time being, you know. Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you, said Sir Topham Hatt. Now everyone back to the sheds. But at Timmouth, the engines were gossiping with each other. Robus seemed a little too excited to take over Thomas's branch line, said Gordon. He might have something to do with Thomas being missing. He probably killed him and got rid of the body. What? It was only a suggestion. Come on, Ramus, said Percy. Let's just go take the mail train and get away from these lunatics. And the two engines left the noisy shed.
Thomas finally came to a stop and his battery died. He could not move. He would just have to sit there and waste away. But then, Ramos heard some footsteps. He got very scared. What is it? He thought. Is it a monster? Meanwhile, on the island of Sodor, Ramos was taking Annie and Clarabelle along the line. He was disappointed that it could no longer deliver trust to the quarry, and he was thinking of something else. He was thinking of all the good times he had with his old friend Thomas. He was thinking of when they first met, and when they raced to Wellsworth, and all the little discussions in between. Ramos realized how much he missed Thomas, and he decided he needed to fix his mistake, but he didn't know how. Thomas was now very scared. He saw a hand reach out for him. Thomas shut his eyes. But it was only the director. Looks like you've ran out of battery, he said. I'll fix that and we'll get you back to Sodor. Thank you, said Thomas, and the director took Thomas down to the garage. Soon, Thomas had new batteries, but a lot of questions. Do you know how I ended up here? He asked. Ramos used his magic cloak to move you off the set. Really? Oh, that rotten... Wait, how do you know all of this? I was filming you and telling the story the whole time. I'm even filming and narrating this discussion right now. Thomas was stunned. But not just because the director knew everything, but also that Ramos betrayed him. But soon, Thomas was back on the set and he puffed off to find his old friend Ramos. Meanwhile, Ramos was stopped at the station with Percy. I really miss Thomas, Percy said. Me too, said Ramos. Can I tell you something, Percy? Yes. I got rid of Thomas, he said. And I was angry with him, but, but I wanted to get him back. Can you please help me? Well, first off, you're a huge jerk for getting rid of my best friend. Yeah, uh, sorry. And second... I'll do anything to help my friends. Thanks, Percy. Beep, peep! There was Thomas, pushing a long line of trucks. Oh, Thomas, you're back! Thank goodness! Now we can- Wait, aren't you on the same track as me? Oh, no. Thomas reversed quickly with Annie and Clarabelle on his back, and Thomas rushing at front on full speed. Ramos puffed and chuffed as fast as his wheels would let him, but Thomas and the trucks were catching up. On, on, faster, faster, said the trucks. You tried to get rid of me, said Thomas, and now you will pay. Ramos soon stopped at a siding at the court. Quickly, he shouted to the workmen. Change the points! And he did, just as Thomas raced in and crashed the trucks into the tunnel. But Thomas recovered fast. And soon he was right in front of Ramos. Please, Thomas, oh, but Ramos, you, you don't have to do this. I can do as I please. I'm the number one engine. His pistons pumped and his wheels turned. But he found that he wasn't going forward. Percy and Toby were coupled up to Thomas, holding him back from charging into Ramos. Let me go, Thomas cried. Let me at him. Just listen to me, Thomas, said Ramos. I pushed you off the set, leaving you to die, and I may have stolen your popularity and even your branch line for a little while. But I realized my mistake, and I wanted to try to get you back home safely. But you got back on your own, so my help was not necessary, and now here you are trying to kill me. Thomas, I'm sorry. Believe him, said Percy. He told me this before you arrived. We do too, said Annie. We were listening to him talking, said Clarabelle. I, I, Thomas thought for a second. He thought of all the times he spent with Ramos, how he helped him, and how he was nice to him. And now he can see a lonely, frightened little engine who was sorry for a mistake that he made. I, I forgive you, Ramos, and, and I'm sorry for all of this. It's all right, said Ramos. You, you, you kind of overreacted a little. Here. Let's go back to the station, said Thomas. So the three engines coupled up to Ramos, got him back on the track, and they puffed to Fafarquhar Station. 
When they arrived, Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for them. Thomas! Sir Topham Hatt cried. There you are! I'm so glad you're safe! Bronze and Thomas told him everything that had happened. Well, Sir Topham Hatt paused. What is important is that you are all safe. Thomas, you will return to your normal routine work. Yes, sir. And Ramus, I know you are sorry for this uh, incident, and I know you would like to continue to work here with your friends. So I have decided that you will work at the Fafakwa Quarry. The quarry? cried Ramus. Oh, thank you, sir. I've always wanted to work down there. Excellent, said Sir Topham Hatt. I know you will be very popular among the engines and workmen who work down there. And, sir? Yes, Ramus. I learned a lesson from all of this. And what is that? That you cannot let anger and popularity get in the way of your friendships. And that, Ramus, is 100% true, said Sir Topham Hatt, and all the engines cheered. The four branch line engines knew that this would be one of their most proud and unforgettable moments, especially for Thomas and Ramus.
So that's going to be all for this video, guys. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. But that's all for now, guys. This is the Blue OJ Leader, and I'll see you later.